Hey there, physics students. In this video, let's review another practice FRQ in preparation for the AP Physics 1 exam. Let's read the problem. This problem explores how the relative masses of two blocks affect the acceleration of the blocks. Block A of mass MA rests on a horizontal tabletop. There is negligible friction between block A and the tabletop. Block B of mass MB hangs from a light string that runs over a pulley and is attached to block A as shown. The pulley has negligible mass and spins with negligible friction about its axle. The blocks are released from rest. Now it doesn't say the word forces in this description, but forces are all over here. They talk about friction, they talk about the block hanging, which means there's a weight force, it's on a tabletop, there's a normal force. Um, they talk about friction in the pulley, uh, or lack thereof. It's a magic pulley like we talked about in class. It's massless and frictionless. It's a light string, which means it has very little mass. So we're clearly going to be dealing with a force problem. Um, it says it's released from rest, which implies that it's going to change its state of motion, which means it's going to accelerate. So let's read on and see what they say. Suppose, suppose ma uh, the mass of block A is much greater than the mass of block B. Estimate the magnitude of the acceleration of the blocks after the release. So it says um, if the mass of A is much greater, much greater than the mass of B. Now let's just think about this first just conceptually. That means the mass of block A is like a huge brick. It's like a sack of cement. It's like a bowling ball. Uh, over here, block B is much, much less, which means it's like a ping pong ball, a feather, or uh, something, you know, a, a piece of a piece of string, it's just something even even so small that it's just as heavy as the piece of string. So we're talking about a large mass over here and a very small mass over here. Okay, what's that going to mean when we release them from rest? Okay, so after the release, what's going to happen? Well there's a force over here because there's a weight force pulling this block down that's going to pull this string and that's going to pull on block A. Is there going to be acceleration? Well sure there is because if there's a net force and there's no friction over here then that means block A is going to accelerate. However if A is much much greater than B which means this is again a feather and a brick um, the feather is not going to move block A very much at all. And in fact, if we go to the extreme, we can say that the acceleration is approximately equal to zero. Now, why is that? Well, because the net force, net force on this is really going to be equal to uh, MB times G. That is going to be the only force that's acting on this system. Um, if MB is very, very small, then the net force is going to be small, then the acceleration is going to be very small. And why is the acceleration going to be small? Because um, if uh, m uh, mass A or block A, MA, uh, has a large inertia, so uh, the small MBG um, will not move M A significantly. So you could say something like that. Okay. Basically the idea is, is you got a really small force on a big object, it's not going to be able to accelerate it very much. You've already claimed that the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, next, they're going to switch it up. And now they say, well, suppose um, if block A, M A, is way less or much smaller or much lesser uh, than M B. Well, then in the extreme, then the acceleration is just going to be equal to or approximately equal to G. Now, how do we know that? Well, same thing. So then, now the net force is still M B G. We know that if MB uh, is now large, that means the acceleration is going to be large. And why is that? Well, that's because, um, and I know uh, it says if, if uh, let's see, MA has small inertia, 
so the large MBG, because it's the big one, um, will be, will cause, or will allow MB to be in free fall. And again, these are just brainstorming ideas. Um, but because the mass is big, we know that the force is big. So um, that, mean, that means the acceleration is going to be big. Uh, MA has a small inertia, so MB, the bigger force on mass B will allow MB to basically be in free fall because it won't impede its motion at all. OK, cool. Um, next question it says, now suppose that neither block's mass is much greater than the other, but they are not necessarily equal. The dots below represent block A and block B as indicated by the labels. Each dot, on each dot, draw and label the forces, not components, that's always going to be true for free body diagrams, exerted on that block after release. Represent each force by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. Okay, so here's our diagram. We know we've got uh, block A, block B, block A, block B. Okay, so what are the forces on block A? Well, we know that it's sitting on the table and it has a force of gravity, the weight force downward, MA times G. You can call that the force due to gravity, the force of the Earth on block A. Um, it's not falling towards the center of the Earth, so we know that it has an opposing force upward, and that opposing force is coming from the table. A surface causes a normal force. You might call that the force of the table on block A. We also see that there's a string touching block A or attached to drop block A, and the string applies a tension force in the only direction that it can, which is to the right, the tension. So that's our free body diagram for block A because there's nothing else touching block A. Okay, block B is hanging, okay, so that means it has a weight force, MB times G. Um, these aren't necessarily the same. And the tension force upward from the string. There are no other forces on block B. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. In terms of the uh, direct, I'm sure, in terms of the magnitudes of these forces, um, MB and T are not going to be the same, so you don't necessarily need to worry about that too much. T and T should be the same length. Uh, FN and MAG should be the same length. But again, as long as you're close approximation uh, to show that there's not something extraordinarily out of uh, the realm of possibilities, uh, you should be fine with your arrows and free body diagrams. Okay, next page. Here we go. It says, derive an equation for the acceleration of the blocks after release in terms of MA, MB, and physical constants as appropriate. If you need to draw anything other than what you have shown in part B to assist your solution, then use the space below. Do not do not add anything to the figure in Part B. So again, they're really particular. They want you to know that there are free body diagrams, and they have forces, not components, and they have all these parameters. Don't change these, because you just got points for that. So you don't want to change these and then mess up your um, ability to earn full credit. OK, so what do we want? We want an expression for uh, the acceleration, an acceleration equation. Now, there are two ways to do this. Uh, first, you can take the two blocks separately, or you can take the blocks as a system. Where is the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is to the right for block A and down for block B. So that's the direct, that's the general direction of acceleration around the pulley. Um, so let's take them separately first, okay? Um, and to do acceleration, we know that we need to start with a second law statement. Sum of the forces equals m times a, therefore a equals uh, f net or the sum of the forces over the mass. Okay, and that's true for a system or individuals or whatever. So let's take them individually first. So block A. Okay, so for block A, what is, what, well, let's do a second law statement for block A. Well, the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. What are the forces on block A that cause acceleration? Well, in the direction of acceleration, the only force that acts is the tension, and that's going to equal MA because there are no other forces. So that's the sum of the forces equals MA. But this is MA times A. Okay? For block B, 
we know that there are two forces, okay? In the direction of acceleration, we have MB times G, that's the winner, minus the loser, the tension, and that has to equal MB times A. Now, that's just a second law statement. The total forces, the sum of the forces, equals the mass times the acceleration. If you do a little math, algebra, you see that tension equals tension. We can do by substitution, and we end up with um, MBG equals, um, let's see, it's going to move that over there. So we're going to have MA plus MB times A. Okay? And that's our, that's our formula for acceleration. Um, I'm sorry, that's not our formula for acceleration. If we solve for acceleration, we're going to get A equals MBG over the sum of the masses, MA plus MB. And that's our equation for acceleration. Okay. Now, for taking it as a system, and again, you only need to do one of these. Taking it as a system, we can start out with the sum of the forces equals MA. Well, like I've said in class, well, what the, what's the only force that acts in the direction of acceleration on the system of A and B? Well, the only force that acts is MB times G. That's the, that's the net force on this um, system. And that's going to equal what? That's going to equal MA. Okay, so, so, so sum of all forces equals MA. This is the sum of all forces. What's the mass that moves? Well, it's MA. Well, which mass moves? Well, both masses move. So how do we write both masses? MA plus MB, and that's going to be times the acceleration of the system. Now notice that this equation and this equation are the same, which means the acceleration is equal to MB times G, the net force, divided by the mass of the system, MA plus MB. Either way you go about it, you're going to end up with the same expression. Okay, now it doesn't matter which one you do, start out with a second law statement, do the individuals, do some substitution, solve for A, do the system, solve for A. Okay, uh, let's see if we can read through this. It says, consider the scenario from part A2, or AII, where the mass of block B is much less than the mass, uh, I'm sorry, the mass of block A is much less than the mass of block B. So when A is really small and B is big, the concrete block versus the feather. Okay, does your equation for the acceleration for the blocks from part C agree with your reasoning in part A I I? Okay, so it says briefly explain your reasoning why, according to your equation, the acceleration becomes or approaches. So they want us to explain. Uh, why that's true or not true. So does it agree? So here's our equation. Our equation says that A is equal to the net force divided by the sum of the masses. Now what was what was the part A part or part A2? Okay, so A2 we ended up with this idea that because MA is very small, has small inertia, so MB will essentially be in free fall. That means we have a bigger acceleration. Well, let's see if that works. I'm not going to answer the yes or no first, but let's see if what happens. So here's our acceleration. So our acceleration equation um, is equal to uh, MB times G over MA plus MB. Well, in this situation, A is much less than MB, so that means this term is very, very small, so that means that the, the quantity turns into uh, basically MB over MB, because MA is very, very small, times G. Well, this is just 1, so that means that A equals, or is approximately equal to G. Now, explain your reasoning. So why is this true? So yes, it definitely is true. But why is it true? Because when A is small, MA is small, um, the quantity MB over MA plus MB is approximately equal to 1. Therefore, A is approximately equal to G, according to this equation. Okay, um, that's pretty much all you, you, you need to say. You need to show that as this goes to zero, this becomes one and A equals G. Okay, this last problem is, is, is 
is a good reasoning strategy problem. Okay, so it says when the blocks are accelerating, the tension in the vertical portion of the string, the tension in the vertical portion of the string uh, is T1. Okay, uh, it says next the original pulley of the negligible mass is replaced with a second pulley of some significant mass. When the two blocks are accelerating in this scenario, the sec with the new pulley, the tension in the vertical portion is T2. How do the two tensions compare to each other? Okay, so I'm just going to use this diagram down here just so that we can remind us what's going on. Okay, so they tell us that when they're accelerating, the tension here is T1 and the MG, MB, MB, G down. Okay, now when this is accelerating, this is accelerating in this direction, the tension upward has to be less than MG in order for it to accelerate downward. Okay, but now they tell us that block B, block B with MBG and the tension, okay, they tell us that it's accelerating downward. Um, it, that when there's a new pulley, a new pulley with some significant mass, so this new pulley with some significant mass, the blocks are still accelerating downward. What does that significant mass mean? Well, because there's a significant mass, um, let's see, uh, the pulley number two, let's call it pulley two, number two, um, has a greater mass, um, that greater mass requires a uh, greater force to accelerate or it takes up some force to accelerate it. It has um, more inertia, has more inertia, therefore T2, I'm sorry, therefore the acceleration is going to be less with pulley 2 than with pulley 1, which has no mass. The acceleration is less. That means the acceleration downward is less. That means T1, the T has to be closer to, M, to the MG if the acceleration is going to be less. If the acceleration is great, T is small, M, MG is big. If the acceleration is small, that means T is closer to MG. So that means with the second pulley, we have a smaller acceleration, and therefore T2 is greater than T1. There we go. Okay, um, that's kind of a hard question to think about unless you really diagram the situation and think about what the force is involved on. But basically, the idea is is there's a the massive pulley is going to take more. Um, it's going to take some more force to accelerate. So that means there's going to be less acceleration. That means there's going to be this tension is going to be closer to the weight than it was when it had a massless pulley. The other way you could look at it is energy. Um, that some of the energy of as this loses potential energy and gains kinetic, some of that energy has to go into not only moving block A on the table, but also moving that significant mass pulley. Okay, um, that's all there is for this one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you next time.